Welcome back into what we're going to call episode 46. Um, I messed up the episode numbering with the two how-to videos I did. So I think the last journey video I did was 43, so 44, 45, and this will be 46. Um, so in the last few videos, you've seen me reassembling that front suspension. And uh, I reached out to a lot of people trying to work out exactly how all the components go together and, you know, specifically the upper control arm. Um, I'm very happy now that I have it all correctly reassembled. I still haven't talked everything up because uh, I'm expecting to have to undo bits that I've forgotten and stuff, but that's where we are at the moment. Um, what I'm going to do in this video is try and push forwards in the brake booster area. So I have all the components back, rebuilt and um, so rebuilt booster, rebuilt master cylinder. I've got new uh, hard brake lines ready to be built. I've got new flexible cables, uh, you know, the final bit to the calipers. I rebuilt the calipers. Um, theoretically, we have the entire brake system ready to go back on. So I'm going to try and push forward in that area. Um, I also want to try and resolve the engine mounts. Uh, the ones I've got look a little bit old and worn. Uh, and I've been trying to work out what to do there. So I'll show you what I go up to with that. Um, so um, as ever, thank you for watching. Um, please, you know, subscribe. I'm on that final push to a thousand subs, subs now. So I'd really like to hit that. Um, like the videos, that really helps YouTube sort of push them up to the top. And leave comments, I really enjoy sort of reading the comments, replying to them. Um, but for now, let's just dive into the video and see where we go. It might be quite hard to see, but what I've got here is uh, behind the brake booster, there's a sheared off stud there that holds the accelerator tube. So you can see that tube uh, coming through the bulkhead, I don't know if I can point through the bulkhead like that, it has a little stud that just holds a clip, uh, keeps it sort of tight to the engine bay. If I zoom out, you'll be able to see where I am. I'm just sort of this side of the engine bay. So, um, if that will focus. So I'm just gonna try and weld one on there now uh, and hopefully be able to see what I do. There we go. Let's have a little look around. Uh, that's pretty well on there actually. So there's a section of um, the wing here that you may have seen in other videos uh, just here that's sort of rusted away. We're over by where the brake booster goes. So what I'm doing is uh, using my Dremel just to sort of um, cut out the rust. I hope you can see it there. Um, cut out the rust and then we'll weld a patch in there just to sort of make it nice. Um, if I thought about it, I would have done it before I undersealed on the inside, but I'm pretty sure it would be okay. I think the underseal will just melt and run away. Um, so let's clean that up now and see how it looks and then we can work out exactly how we're going to weld it. So I've very badly drawn um, through the hole onto a piece of card, so I now cut that out and uh, create a template. Then I can just skim off. I, I, I'll have to get it and then just see how it fits. But part of this is supposed to be a circle that the I think it's the washer screen filler goes through. So I'll I'll create that as well, uh, and then we can cut it out into metal. So I've cut a very small piece of metal and uh, just sort of lightly taped it to the back here. And then on the other side, I've sprayed um, grey zinc primer so I can see the area that I need to sort of cut off to make it fit perfectly. So using that technique you can see uh, pretty much exactly where I need to trim off. It's around sort of here and then around the top side uh, here. And that should then be pretty much a perfect fit that I can just weld in. Then using my Dremel with uh, some carbide sort of heads on it, uh, I'm just trimming it off. I've just pretty much done that. I'll just trim that last little bit so you can see how easy it does it. But um, this is pretty much ready now. probably do it. Let's try it for size and uh, weld it in. Okay so after a little bit more trimming that's how the insert fits. This looks pretty decent. I'll have a little bit more to shave off the inside to make it a perfect circle but in terms of the uh, where it abuts the rest of the you know the rusted stuff um, I think it's pretty decent so I'm going to start tacking that in 
Uh, I'm hoping the underseal will just sort of burn away, which it should right, do. Right, so we're all, we're all ready to weld. Um, I'm going to try and just get one little spot weld on the corner. Um, as I say, I don't know how it's going to react to the underseal. I'm hoping it burns straight through it, but let's just try. I'm just checking the earth is there. Possibly. Okay. Right, well that's welding through at least. Let's have a quick look. Okay, so I've, at least I've managed to get some spot welds on there, um, which I, shows I've got a good earth. So I'm gonna basically just weld around that, I think now. Um, let's check it is, yeah, it's there. What I'm really conscious of is I don't want to put too much heat in because uh, you know I've got little things like this little bit here, a bit of plastic and stuff. Um, so I'm going to go quite gentle, quite slow. Right, that's how it looks now after I've welded in the patch uh, and I've just sort of ground off the surface of the weld. I've not over ground because this is all covered in under seal. I don't want to weaken it particularly. Um, and I definitely don't want to sort of grind away any of the um, sort of other metal that's there, which is quite hard to see just in that sort of very tight restricted area. Um, but it's looking pretty good. I've got to just round off the hole a little bit more at the bottom here. Um, I'll just nibble a little bit more away there just to make it into a perfect circle. But I'm pretty happy with that. Right, hopefully you can see, um, this is the hole that I've just sort of repatched up. Um, that's the filler neck that'll go through with the grommet that'll fit in there really nicely. Um, that finishes off pretty good, I think. So what I'll do now is I'll underseal all, the, all of this just so it's um, completely coated and covered and secure. And uh, that's another job done. Okay, so next up on the journey, I find myself back under the uh, dashboard looking at the brake pedal. So this is the pin that I had to cut ultimately to get the um, the booster out. So I had to slice it. I can't remember, I think it was this side I sliced. Um, so I need to get that free, which might involve taking the entire brake pedal out. Um, and that's why I'm in here just sort of having a look, trying to work out what I need to do. Um, difficult to see actually from where I am so I'm just gonna move you around and you might be able to see and then I can look at the video but I'm pretty sure I sliced it off there uh, I don't know whether it's easy to take the pedal out or to persist trying to get that out okay it actually took um, a surprising amount of time to get this clip off it was uh, mainly because I thought it was just one of those ones that you push on uh, so I was just hitting away at it with a hammer Whereas actually I had to turn it around and flick it over the, uh, of this. I can't put it on there now. I had to just sort of flick it over the end of this shaft and it then slid off. Anyway, pedals out. So the, um, the piece I need to get out is here. This is, I think, rusted in place. Um, unless I'm really mistaken and it's, it's supposed to be there, but I don't think it is. I should check that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really should check that. Um, my expectation was I pull the pin out and this whole thing comes out, but looking at it now, it kind of looks pretty in there. Um, anyway, I'm going to sort of get it on some wood blocks and just try and tap it out and see what happens. Um, perhaps give it a little bit of a warm up. Um, while the pedal's out, just looking at it, I think I'll send it away and get it powder coated. I've got a few items to be powder coated, so this might as well join the, the bunch. Um, there's a little bit of rust on the pedal itself, um, minor. But why not? Why not? Right, finally had uh, the pin has come out. So it was pretty much just sort of corroded in there. What I had to do in the end was actually drill down. If you imagine that was in there. 
I've had to drill down inside this, the the uh, pin uh, and then put the center punch in and sort of smash it out like that. But it's taken quite a lot. You can see how much I've drilled away. Uh, I guess it sort of weakens it. About half of the stud has, or the uh, pin has been weakened. Uh, probably not pressing against the wall so much and uh, allowed it just to come out. But that's finally out. So I need to order a new one of those. This can now go away and be powder coated. Uh, and then we can start reassembling all of the brake stuff. Right, back on it after a couple of days of uh, doing some other things. Um, no one pointed out that when I put the steering rack in, I've left off the, the engine mounts. So I started to look at the engine mounts. Mine are pretty rubbish. Um, I've looked into repairing them, recreating them. And in the end, the actual easiest solution is just to buy new ones. So, on the bench we have new engine mounts. So that's the new one, that's the old one. Um, they're pricey, they're about £180 each. Um, but at least they're you know, the proper thing and they'll be solid. So the plan today then is to drop the, uh, the bottom of the cross member, lower down the steering rack, which is no bad thing because I couldn't get it to connect to the steering um, intermediary shaft anyway. So with the steering rack lowered, I'll be able to sort of put the, uh, that sort of knuckle onto the shaft there. Um, so drop the steering rack and then I can bolt up the engine mounts correctly. Right, I've dropped the steering rack down probably about six inches, something like that, uh, on a trolley jack just enough so I can put my hand up underneath and push the bolts through and I should be able to get a torque wrench on the bottom of it um, and then just sort of torque them up. There's no torque setting but I'll do the appropriate one for that size bolt. So I had to drop the steering rack a tiny bit more but I've managed to push one of the bolts through from underneath and just get it started in this mount. Um, it's quite hard to tell which way around to put the mount but I've put the little catch thing at the back that's the I, I think it's if the rubber fails it stops it all sort of falling apart. Um, so that's at the back that allows the well that seats the mount such that it looks like it's pretty flat on the top um, which I hope is correct. Now I'm going to just put a socket set in there and just torque that up. Right, I can't see any guidance on the torque settings so I've done them up pretty tight probably about um, well the torque torque range is set to about 40 newton meters and I've gone just over that so hopefully that's fine it's uh, the manual says 40 newton meters for 10 m10 bolts these are m12 so I've just done that a little bit more um, in terms of their orientation so I've done them because both mounts are the same I've done them uh, this one goes around this way if you can see the little sort of retaining hook at the bottom here is at the front and vice versa on this side that seems to leave the engine mounts, if you look, sort of in their flattest position. If I turn them round, they angle in a lot. Um, I think that's right. I'm going to just double check. Okay, bright and early Sunday morning and the engine mounts are in. So I'm going to spend today putting that steering back in, steering rack back in, uh, and the little knuckle that connects to the uh, intermediary steering shaft. Um, that's all being cleaned up. That's hanging up here. You can just see it there, looking pretty sweet. Um, and I've covered that in that jet lag, so that shouldn't corrode. Uh, but let's try and get it all together now. Right, I've just started putting it on. Um, it can only go on one way, which is basically there's a little recess there. I think you can probably see it. And that has to line up with the hole for the bolt to go through. So um, that's really good that I can't get it around the wrong way. Um, I've popped a sort of chisel in here, just trying to widen it so it allows it to slide on a bit easier. Still really tight, so I'm just looking at it. Wondering whether I should sort of just um, clean up the thread here just to make sure it's, you know, there's nothing stopping it. Um, but basically that's where it needs to go. So we'll just keep working on that for a minute. Okay, one bit I'd forgotten to look at was the um, the steering shaft. I think it's called the steering intermediate shaft here. Um, I've just given that a quick coat of black paint, uh, cleaned off all the rust and sort of debris and stuff. Uh, so that will just at least clean it up so it looks neat. Right, so just attaching the, um, the sort of knuckle thing onto the steering rack. It also only goes one way because the bolt has to pass through a little recess that's in this blind shaft, uh, which I've got it around the right way there. I can't show you because it's on the other way, you know, the bottom of the, um, well, it's upside down. So um, I'm just going to work that on a bit further <clears throat> and then I can start pulling the steering rack up. The steering rack is just held up at the moment. As you can see like that. I've just got to pull it up that last little bit and then it'd be pretty much done. 
Right, and there we are, all back together again. So that's the steering rack uh, on my bespoke solid mounts, the two washer trick, which uh, I know some of you won't like, but we're going to try it. Uh, the steering uh, sort of knuckle, CV joint, whatever you call it there, is uh, all in place, all cleaned up, painted and all looking good. Um, what else have we done this week? Uh, oh, we've got this side here where the brake booster will go. Um, I've obviously welded in the patch, so this uh, hole here is clean. Popped a bolt on there, and we can start putting the brake, brake booster in there. Uh, you can also see that I've actually cleaned up the area and sprayed it in the correct colour as well. Which is starting to look quite nice. Um, I'm going to continue that around the engine bay. There's a lot of wires here that I need to deal with. Uh, some of those are the brake pipes that I need to rebuild. Um, but I'm coming to those probably next week, I expect. Um, I'll see how I get on. It might be that I need to spend the week just putting the booster in. But let's just see how we get on with that. Well, I think that wraps up this week. Uh, not unhappy with progress, as usual. Um, really good to get those engine mounts in. I was sorely tempted to uh, to get uh, to use the old ones or to try and make some or bodge something together. But I'm really happy that I've just gone for the original ones. They're 180 pounds each. It's not crazy, but um, at least we know that the engine will be sitting on something solid. So that's good. Uh, and I love the way the steering rack looks. That's all in there, really neat. Um, with the um, the joint and things, it looks fantastic. So I'm happy with that. Um, and I'm slowly, uh, although I've not really shown you much of it, I'm slowly working around the engine bay, cleaning it uh, and painting it. Um, doing the best I can. It's not uh, an all out complete spray. And I've made that decision uh, sort of a while back that I'm not going to do a engine out respray. Um, I'm going to do what I can in the engine bay and spray it and kill rust and everything. But it's going to be... Um, done separately to the exterior so I want to be able to drive it to the to the spray shop uh, and part of the reason is that I'm trying to de-risk the project if I you know I could send the shell away now to be resprayed but that's probably five six thousand um, pounds and what I really want to do is get the engine in and check the engine all works to, to know that this is a project that I want to keep pumping money into um, if I put the engine in and the engine you know the the short block I bought is completely kaput already uh, I need to rethink my strategy a little bit so um, that's why I'm not just chucking the shell away to be uh, sprayed, you know, and, and pumping money into that until I know that this is, uh, uh, it's going to work, <laughs> ultimately. Um, so, let's leave the video there. Um, next week we're going to be on that brake booster. I've now actually put the booster in, but we've got all the bits out, the pedals out and all that stuff now, so that's really good. Um, I'm hoping the pedal will come back from the powder coating, uh, so then I can just put the pedal in, put the pin in put the booster in, connect that up, put the master cylinder in and start building from the pedal back really, or forwards as it is. Um, and I think that probably will wrap me up all of next week. Um, I'm also looking at the firewall insulation. So there's like a silver uh, lining on the back of the firewall there. Uh, wondering what to do, whether I should just clean it up and spray it. I've read some people um, actually take it out and reline it with uh, heat proof material. Um, let me know what you think I should do there. It looks pretty tricky to get out. I'm sort of staring at it now, wondering, you know, how on earth I'm going to get that out. Um, but please leave me a comment. Let me know what what you've done, what you've seen done, what's the best strategy there, um, and I can start thinking about that for you know a couple of weeks time. Okay then. So thanks as ever. Uh, please keep subscribing, keep liking, keep commenting, and I'll see you next week.